In this video, we'll be looking at different tools described by Ashley that are used for tying knots and working with rope. Ashley first focuses on the tools that would be used by sailors, sailmakers, and riggers. According to Ashley, the rigger would keep a marling spike, horn, and knife in his belt. The horn, also called the rigger's horn or grease horn, would contain tallow, which is a hardened animal fat for greasing rope strands. Entry 86 discusses the cutting of lanyards and other rigging. A rope would be held against a spar, which is a thick, strong pole, and the back of a knife blade would be tapped or pounded with the head of a marling spike. Entry 87 discusses a sailmaker's bench, and how it had many holes to hold all the various tools that were needed. The sailmaker would use a small three-edged tool called a stabber for making eyelet holes. A marling spike is a tool shaped as a long cone, and is used for opening strands and splicing in multi-strand knot tying. It has a bulging head for pounding and a hole for passing a lanyard through. The bulging head is what distinguishes a marling spike from a fid, which doesn't have this bulging head. A fid may have a head, as shown on the picture on the right, but it doesn't bulge beyond the line of the cone's taper. A pricker is a small tool primarily used by a sailmaker. Ashley says it is made of metal with a handle of a different material, or else it is made entirely of metal and small enough to be held with the grasp of the hand. The sailor, sailmaker, and rigger all have an associated knife. The rigger's knife is square-pointed and thicker than the sailor's knife. The sailor's knife frequently has a blunt point, and the sailmaker's knife is pointed. The back of the sailor's knife is often used for rubbing light seams. A rubber, also called the seam rubber, would be used for heavy seams. Instead of thimbles for sewing, a sailmaker would use a palm, which is a metal disc mounted in a leather or rawhide band. A roping palm is used for sewing bolt rope to canvas, and a seaming palm for sewing cloths together. Ashley says that knot tying doesn't require expensive tools and that most of the single strand knots in his book can be done with fingers and a long round shoestring. Many of the tools for knot tying can be substituted with common household items. But Ashley notes that using the proper tools and materials will result in better workmanship and ultimately save time. There are four different kits for knot tying that Ashley had arranged for a dealer to keep in stock. This arrangement though was ultimately cancelled. There were many useful tools in these kits and the first one was considered a general kit as it had everything that would be needed for general knotting. The drawing tools in this kit, the pencil, eraser, tracing paper, and pantograph, were intended for drawing diagrams of knots. Being able to tie a knot over a diagram can be very helpful if the knot is elaborate. The second kit was a supplementary kit, and it included tools for splicing. The second kit was also supplementary, and it included sail making and netting tools. The fourth and final kit was an occasional tools and materials kit. This concludes Ashley's discussion on knot tying tools, and in the next video we'll look at different types of material used for knot tying.